Hello, hello, good morning. Yes, I lied. <laughs> I said the other one was going to be the last one, but I was laying here and and in, in, in my prayer mode and talking to God mode and um uh, uh so I have something to say. God bless you, God keep you. Let God's mercy and his grace be forever on you. God bless all the people that were involved in the shooting, that were uh, murdered, their families. Uh, uh, my prayers go out to all of them. I pray that God sends a comforter to them, that they don't hate God for what happened. I pray that they don't hate, period. Um, I pray for the shepherd to come and to comfort them. Uh, all of the shootings in Las Vegas, the shooting that just occurred, uh, what was it, Minnesota, wherever it was, uh, the job shooting, all of this violence, things said and things unsaid. Uh, I pray in the name of God, not my will, but God's will be done. Uh, this will be an audio. It's early in the morning. You don't want to see me. <laughs> Anyway, I plan on going to work today. I got a job. So, you know, God's good. That's why I said you take it anger out on the jobs and all this thing. Man, go go get another job. Woman, go get another job. You know what I'm saying? Pick up cash, whatever. Don't go kill nobody on no jobs, man. Don't do that. You know. Um, anyway, it is what it is. And uh, like I said, I pray for the... I pray for the, uh, the victim as well as the family. You know what I'm saying? God's will be done, not ours, you know what I'm saying? Only God can judge people, you know. But uh, that's devastating to take lives like that because you're angry and things didn't go your way, you know. So, um, uh, anyway, uh, what I realized is I had talked about some things and... Um, I had so much on my mind and so much I was trying to say because I, I know I'm getting ready to get rid of this internet. And like I said, I probably, uh, yeah, I'm getting ready to get rid of that. And so I did, like I said, I went out here and started handling bills and manipulating things. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I want the control of my life. You know what I'm saying? It's not wrong, you know, to take control of your life. So I, I'm taking control of my life and make some decisions, you know, um, within God's will and with God's acceptance. I'm not going to do anything and be disobedient, but I know with some things that I see I'm slipping out. You know, I'm not going into, I'm not going to end this year being in debt, worrying all the time. You know, yeah, I'm quite sure I will have debt. debt uh, I'm going to have money loss. You know what I'm saying? I owe people, but I'm not going to keep on adding to it. I'm not going to keep being in debt. I'm not going to keep struggling. That's what I'm planning on ceasing. And like I said, with this bill, it's unnecessary. So anyway, saying that, I didn't want to say this because it hurt my little pride. And uh, God, bit it, he made me get rid of pride. But I didn't say it because it, it hurt me and it, and it bothered me. And uh, it discombobulated me. Uh, I went to take the, uh, finish out the application, job application. And, uh, uh, at her, and, uh, had to take the drug test. So in the process of that, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, they call me in. you telling me you got a position open. So I'm in there, and I'm like, after I get through talking to them, they're going to tell me, oh, uh, they want somebody to work the shift that I don't like. You know what I'm saying? You, you want somebody to be running around at uh, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning again, you know, running the streets. And you're going to tell me that's how you get. So like I was saying yesterday, uh, they said that, but... Anyway, God opened the door and he showed me another path. Plus, this job is my second job that I usually work that I go on today. So, anyway, uh, when the God opens the door, step in it. That's why I said he didn't want me there where evil was. He opens the door. And when God saw, oh, if, if you're in a situation you don't want to be in, let me add this real quick. If you're in a situation you don't want to be in and you're unhappy with and there's a whole lot of evil going on, it's not your doing, it's somebody else doing things to you and making your job difficult. And you like, okay, God, what? You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, jobs start calling you. Hey, we can get, we, that's God saying, come on and go. <laughs> Step into that and let God open the door for you. Like I said, that's what I, that's how I pray. God, look, this is difficult. Is this where you want me to be? If not, Lord, open the door and let me go. Move me. 
And like I said, he will. I pray for him to move me from his area. Living next door to this evil person. That's what opened my eyes made me see all this stuff. But I can't close uh, can't close my eyes. I've already seen it. So anyway, so I was at the job thing. Sorry for digressing, but I want to get everything out. <laughs> I'm trying to get everything out. And uh, I'm trying to be obedient. But like I said, this, it hurt my pride. And I didn't want to tell y'all about it because I was angry. Let me put that out there and keep it real with you. Like I said, I'm human. So anyway, I went to the job and... I'm ex they call me in doing all that texting. You know, I accept texts. Anytime a job's open, they, you know, I have it on my phone where they can text me, call me, whatever. So anyway, I get in there. They're going to tell me the shift, uh, third shift, basically. Uh, second and third shift. Now nah, I don't want that. 5.45 to 4 o'clock in the morning. So I didn't want that. I said, I'll wait. So I leave out. As I'm walking, you know I'm pissed. <laughs> you know, it, that's not a bad word. So... I walk in, all of a sudden, I look down on the ground, I swear, you know what I'm saying, you, you know I don't play, you know I didn't even want to tell this story, and you're going to see why. So, I look down on the ground, what do I see? I see like five or six, <laughs> to me it was like $250, it was all 50s. So I look around like, okay, maybe somebody's coming to get it, but you know, I did one of them quick looks. <laughs> you know, the street in me hurried up and popped up. I picked it up. I put it in my purse because my purse stays open. So I put it in my purse. I start walking to my car swiftly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lord, now you didn't. You know, it's exactly what I need. It would get me totally out of debt. It would have paid a couple of bills. The two little loose ends I got. I needed it. I needed that money. It was the exact amount, really about the exact amount I need that would have pulled me up out of some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Clear my little pad. So I get to the car. As I'm in the car, I just drive. I'm driving slow because I'm like, wow, you know what I'm saying? God, you know, is this you? You know, are you, ooh, you just showing up like that? You give me exactly what I need. You knew I needed, you know, and I'm praying. As I'm praying, I'm not driving fast. I'm driving slow. I'm not trying to run like I robbed somebody. So I see a pair of glasses in the lot. So I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Y'all know I'm dingy sometimes. I'm like, oh, Lord done blessed me with this. He blessed me with the money. And then what I needed, and now here's a pair of glasses, and I need some glasses because my uh, I broke my glasses working on the car, so uh, I need prescription glasses. So I'm looking, I'm like, oh Lord, get blessed with some glasses. So I get out of the car to go pick up the glasses. As I'm getting out of the car to pick up the glasses, here come a white man with a beard running up. Hey, you got my money? You got my money? And I'm like, oh wow. So I get out of the car, I'm proceed. I get out of the car, slow motion. I'm not angry or nothing like that. Cause I was like, you know, in my mind, it's like, it's too good to be true. So he was like, uh, what, what, what hit me so powerful is that I, I it was a test, you know? And, uh, he said, that's all the money I have in the world. And it's like, whoa. And so I uh, proceed. I didn't, I hadn't checked it. I gave him this money back. And uh, he was like, thanks, thank, thank you. You know what I'm saying? And then he walked away. And uh, I, I, in the process, though, when I was said, giving him his money back, he was like, yeah, he said, uh, yeah, I seen you. Uh, I, I seen you. And uh, yeah, something about his truck. I guess he called himself was going to chase me. But, you know, he, he mailed it down when he seen I was giving it. And then uh, I was like, here, and he said, thank you. I said, wait a minute. I think there's another 50 in here. So then I went on and gave him his money, all of it, make sure I didn't have nothing in there. And uh, so then, you know, then I had looked at the glasses. I'm like, these glasses was extra thick. So I threw them. So then, you know, like I said, I was puzzled for some days, you know. <laughs> I guess it happened like, what was that? Uh, last Thursday? Nah, was that last Thursday, Friday, something like that? Uh, now, I wasn't Friday. It was like Monday. I think, it, yeah, it was Monday. I think it was like Monday, yeah, because I went in like on a Monday. But, yeah, I was pissed. I was like, God, what was that for? You know what I'm saying? That's embarrassing and humiliating. And then I was like, what was it, a setup? You know, I'm playing everything. I'm trying to figure out everything. Was that a setup? I, uh, is that the devil making fun of me? You know, oh, yeah, look, you need something. I'm going to act like I'm going to give it to you. Psych. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what it felt like to me. Psych. You know. Look, look, you need all these things, and God's not supplying your needs. You know, look, psych, because any other time, yeah, that that was like, whoa. In the day, back in the day, oh, it would have been a turning point for me. That was one of them, you, you, ooh, you know, it was push the F button day for mine right there. But I thank God that I have 
uh, <laughs> two books in my life. And uh, so, you know, I just looked at it and I prayed about it and I just kept moving. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I know, I, I just remember that, you know, I don't know if it was the devil or God at first at the time. But I, I, I think it was a test. But from God. But other than that, nah. You know, I don't know if it was test. Let me take it back. I don't know if it was a test for God or what. But what I do know, let me stop trying to make things perfect. Let me tell the truth. I don't know if that was from God or if it was the devil. I don't know. But what I do know is that when God's going to give me something, he'll give it to me. However he does, he'll give it to me. You know, and so I'm not angry with God about that. I was a little perturbed at first. I'm like, God, you know, I need it. But then I remember that he, oh, Lord Jesus, he just spoke to me. He said, I'll make your crooked way straight. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to worry about that. He's been taking care of me, and I know he loves me. And really, the more I'm talking to you now, God wouldn't play with me like that. So it was the devil, you know, trying to make me angry with God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, now I see it. Sometimes I got to talk about because I don't have anybody that I could take and run things through. That's why I often I talk to myself, you know. And if you know anybody know me, I have been around me. When I'm in church, I, uh, when I take my walks, you know, when I'm at peace, I don't talk to myself. It's a lot of times when certain times, most of the time I really talk to myself is in the car, to be honest, you know. You know, sometime around the house. But you know what I'm saying? When you by yourself, those are the things you do. You know, sometimes you do. You know what I'm saying? But uh, like I said, it's not often. When I'm not talking to myself, I'm in my head. I'm thinking about some serious stuff. Um, so anyway, um, that's out there. <laughs> that was bothering me. And as you see, I couldn't really sleep because God woke me up. And it's like, tell them, you know, that story. Because a point with that... Is that the devil will come and try to lead you astray. Like I said with that, he wanted me angry, so I'll be pissed off at God and I go in a different direction. Oh God, you did that to me. I'ma go ahead and I'm not gonna work. I'm gonna go do this and get this money this way and that way. You know, and it don't think it didn't jump in my head. Oh, how you gonna tell me that I took the money? You know what I'm saying? Uh, nah, I ain't giving nothing back. And I know that's what everybody going to say. And that's why I didn't want to say nothing to I said, ah, oh, people going to say, you stupid. You needed the money. You gave the money back. You know, so I, like I said, I had to grow up and, and I had to pray about it and get beyond what people might say. I need to help somebody. You know, it's not about me. It's about helping somebody because not only do I did I get that test, somebody else is going to get that test. And it, maybe it's not a test. You know what I'm saying? It's a uh, temptation. You know, it, it wasn't a test. When it's from God, it's a test. When it's from the devil's temptation. And so, yeah, it could have made me act out, argue with that man. You know what I'm saying? A whole lot of drama could have popped out. You know what I'm saying? I was in need of the money. I could have went off and argued with him or whatever. I could have kept going for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, I'm not about that type of thing no more. So, you know what I'm saying? So, all that confrontation and arguing over stuff. So, yeah, it is what it is. But um, you will be in that same situation one day and ask the question, is this God or is this the devil? You know what I'm saying? What Ask God, what should I do? You know, like I said, if I would have seen somebody looking for some money, I would have went up and said, I didn't see nobody. You know, because I've had tests like that before. Well, I've been, uh, not tests, like I said, temptation. This situation, this was different. Because, like I said, I ain't, I had never found no money, man, really, since I've been so. <laughs> Back in the day, I might rock, walk up out or something, you know, be running around somewhere near a club or something. I would see some money. i find something. Now, pretty much, I haven't found anything, you know what I'm saying, you know, where you could say straight out, I found it, you know. Well, let me take it back. Let me take it back. Oh, man, yeah. One time. Now, this one I knew. I, I thank you, Jesus. Wow, well, see, that's what I'm talking about. When you got somebody to talk to, which I, you know, I don't know anyway. Man, I remember one time. Thank you, Jesus. Just reminded me. I did get tempted just like this before. Because uh, when I first was getting sober, I remember, I think I was like, uh, I might have been maybe two years sober. Um, it might have been maybe two years sober. Yeah, I think I was like two years sober. 
Man, I was walking. I can't remember where I was walking. But I, uh, <laughs> I'm an alcoholic dude. But hey, if you fire up one, I'll smoke it. Man, I'm talking about that green stuff back in the day. So anyway, I was two years sober and I was walking. I forget where I was. I was crossing the street somewhere. And I looked down and you know, <laughs> anybody know about getting high. You know what I'm saying. You know when you see something. So I'm looking. I'm like, it looked like a bag of weed. I'm like, nah, somebody done took some of them black and mouth and they done tweaked it. And they, done put, they put it in that bag. But then in my mind, you know, that believe me now, this is not, I didn't walk past it. All of this is hitting my head. Y'all, y'all heard my fingers clicking. <laughs> I'm alcoholic. All this is hitting. I'm walking. I'm seeing it. I'm looking at it. It looked like weed. Why is it black? I'm looking. I'm picking it up. I'm walking. <laughs> oh, man. I had a purse there. I usually don't even care. I, wouldn't, I didn't even have a purse. I had something. I put it in my pocket. I forget. I don't think I put it in my pocket because I was thinking, you know, the smell be there. Whatever, I had a bag or something. I threw it in. Yeah, I had a bag or something. Anyway, I'm sitting in the car. I get to the car. You know what I'm saying? I'm pulled out. I'm like, mm hmm. <laughs> Woo, what should I do? I don't smoke weed. You know what I'm saying? I'm sober. What am I going to do? And I'm talking about anybody that know, all kind of stuff went through my head. Ooh, Lord, wonder if I know somebody that need it. Who do I know? I know somebody, but I could sell it. Because at the time, I needed a little change. Well, I could have used some change then. Oh, my God. So, I was like, wow, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And all the time, I'm thinking, now, you know what thought hit me next? What if you get caught with that? You sober, you get caught with that, and then you look real stupid setting up in jail and you're sober. So, anyway... Like I said, be careful out there. Watch for, for, for those temptations. Yeah, watch for I'm not talking about the singing group temptations. Watch, watch out for temptation. Because believe me, that's what causes a lot of problems. That's what causes a lot of this evil and this shooting and stuff like that. It's temptation. You know, you know. It's not about putting a gun in, in a, a person picking up a gun. It's about entertaining those thoughts. Letting those thoughts get in your head. Let me go harm somebody. Let me get back at them. Well, the justice system didn't work, so let me go take the law into my own hands and do this. True, the name of my organization is Vigilantes for Justice and it's Vigilantes for Jesus. The switch over is Vigilantes for Justice. What that means is that by any means within the law, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fight for what's wrong. And, and I'm going to speak out against it. That's being vigilante. Vigilante means doing, taking the, taking things into your own hand. You know, and really just picking up the law in your own hand. I got the, my name from uh, Charles Bronson. That's my baby, Charles Bronson. And uh, when he, they called him a vigilante. And I thought about it. Instead of being a vigilante going out here shooting people like he did, why not be a person that goes out here and stands up for Christ at, with any, with, at any cost? You know what I'm saying? By any means, carrying the crosses to the streets and knocking on people's door and asking them, do they believe in God and telling them, Here, here's, here's a savior. Here's somebody that can help you. Here's somebody that loves you. That's where my name came from and when I first started Vigilantes for uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, that's how it came about, you know, watching the Charles Bronson movie. So, like I said, yeah, I'm not back talking about hurting somebody, harming somebody, picking up guns and doing all that. But like I said, though, with my situation right there, yeah, you know, <clears throat> yeah, that was, believe me, that kept playing in my head. I was like, darn, what should I have done? And then I look at it, yeah, I did right. Give that man back. How you going to argue with somebody over their money? And then, you know, you know the, uh, the Satan jumped in my head. How you know it really was his? <laughs> you know? And and I looked in, I was like, nah, you know, and I believe somebody snitched me out anyway, you know, because I had passed somebody, so somebody probably said something, you know, but it is what it is, you know. If God meant for me to have it, he would give it to me, and, and he probably wouldn't give it to me in that way anyway, you know, because it would have been somebody's loss, somebody needed to pay their bills, you know, and there's been times, you know, I found things and I've given it back to people anyway. 
So, you know, because I would want people to do me the same way. You know what I'm saying? And what came to my mind, too, I remember I was shopping and I lost the food stamp card in Walmart. And I knew I had paid when I lost it. I knew what I went back the path that I went because I got bad habit of carrying stuff, cell phones and stuff in my pocket, my back pocket. So when I lost it, you know, you know how you walking and you looking for something. And like I said, mm -hmm, my tongue is not always spiritual. So I was pissed. So I'm cussing, <laughs> you know, yes, I was. I'm cause I'm like, oh man, you know what I'm saying? I need the food and here it is. I done lost the card, you know what I'm saying? And, oh man, you know what I'm saying? I got to get these groceries and I had a cart and I had food in it. And I'm like, I done left the cart because I'm running around like, oh my God, what happened? And I'm like, I know somebody picked it up. So, you know, I'm cussing. I'm saying, I know somebody picked it up. I know them. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I picked it up. And so I seen people looking out silly. So I'm like, I know somebody picked it up. You can't use it without the pen unless they think it's some money. I don't, it wasn't any money. I was just food stamps out. So I'm looking. So all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, as I'm walking, I went down one pathway and I said, something said backtrack. So I backtrack. All of a sudden, I seen the car. I'm trying to think, did I see it? I did somebody tell me that, uh, oh, yeah, you dropped this. I think somebody said, yeah, you dropped this. Yeah, somebody gave it to me. And so I said, oh, thank you. But yeah, uh-uh. Man, I know how I feel in some later day. It took me a minute to think of that one. <laughs> like I said, first thing I was thinking about, wow, I could go pay this off, get my ring out of pine. I mean, I had all of it. I was like, thank you, Jesus. But then, like I said, it was a feeling. It wasn't a thank you, Jesus feeling. It was like, wait a minute. You know, what's up with this? Because I thought somebody was trying to set me up and say I robbed them or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because I be running my mouth on her. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, ah, maybe somebody tried to set me up, you know what I'm saying? Then I'm thinking about the chick next door. I was like, maybe she's setting me up, you know what I'm saying? And then to be honest with you, one thing, the money was light. It was all light green. I ain't never said, I don't believe that. I've had some 50s. And, and to be honest, that was another thing. Thank you, Jesus. God just put on my mind. Something was weird about that money. That money was light. I don't know if it was counterfeiting. To be honest, that's what killed. And I think God put that on me too. Like how? So to be honest, going to spend it now. Nah. Cause I, in my head I kept saying this. It was light, light, light green. Like it been washed. It looked almost like fake money, but they was fifties. He had a whole lot fifty, and then he ran to get them. And then I'm thinking like that might have been counterfeit. You know what I'm saying? Cause you get a lot of people near the season running around her passing them fake bills and stuff like that at fake money. You know what I'm saying? They caught my cousin with one. Somebody passed it to my cousin. And uh, he got caught with it. And they thought he was making counterfeit. But he did. And the police talked to him and everything. They realized he wasn't trying to do it. Somebody passed it to him. But yeah, it, it looked counterfeitish. <laughs> Believe that. So, you know, you get, you, you know, like I said, I look at everything. I, like, I go in the store. You know, because with me, you know what I'm saying? Me and a lot of people, when you're trying to do things, for God, or when you're trying to fulfill your vision, if you want to open a motorcycle shop, you know, that's your dream. You want to open your tattoo shop. You know, there's a beautiful shop. <laughs> like I said, I give shout outs where they deserve, you know. There's a shop down off of uh, Chester Street. Before you get to the child support office, once you pass a uh, uh, Dennis, Penn Dennis Club, the men's club sitting there, once you pass that, right on that corner next to it, it used to be a tattoo parlor. I don't know if they still there. But it's a clothing store there, and it's black owned. Uh, patronize that. It's a little expensive, but patronize that. I've never purchased anything out of it, but I ain't lying. It makes me stand on drool. I mean, they got some cold clothes in there. I mean, beautiful. A lot of clothes for the uh, for a couple of younger people, but they got some cold clothes in there. Yeah, man, I'm talking about some nice clothes. They got a little fur in there. It's multicolored, a little short. Oh, my God. They had a beautiful dress. Mm. Anyway, they have some beautiful clothes in there. I mean, they, they got they have some dresses that be. Mm. I'm talking about New York type stuff. I'm talking about better than Macy's. You know, not they top line Macy's. You know what I'm saying? You know, like to look, but Macy's. I'm talking about beautiful clothes, beautiful clothes. And um, so anyway, I digress. <laughs> but anytime you have a vision. I, I, you have a goal that you really try to set. Look for, for for obstacles to come in your way. And like I said, when I first looked at it and I picked it up, I was hesitant because I said, well, anyway, it might be counterfeit. Then here it is. I go in the store and I'm locked up. 
thinking I'm can I, uh, they thinking that I'm yeah counterfeit money. You know what I'm saying? I'm making it and stuff. So I you know I looked at all of that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you know I thank God and then really to show you how God was. If I would have kept going, it would have looked like I took his money and then he called on the police and you know what I'm saying? A whole lot of stuff popped out. But I thank God when God put the glasses there. I think that was God saying, look, because that paused me. You know what I'm saying? That stopped me. And so, I, like I said, I had backed up, so I didn't even see him at first. And then here he come running, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I thank God. But like I said, he said what really was important. He said that was all I had. It looked counterfeit, but he said that was all I had. You know what I'm saying? So it makes you think, you know, he might have needed to pay a fine. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, he white what color he was. That was his money. But here it is. He needed something to do with that money. And then, you know what I'm saying? Just imagine I did go somewhere. I did go, you know. The point I'm making in all this, if I look at it, I would have went off with that money. And here it is. I couldn't go back in there and just run around. Anybody lose $200? It really, y'all said it wasn't no 200 It looked like 200 me, but it's like $150. You know. All right, hey, anybody lose? You can't do that. I, did somebody lose some money? What was it like? You know what I'm saying? And plus, like I said, to be honest, <laughs> the need for greed hit me. And it's like, hey, keep it moving. So, like I said, you know, this person, I would have had the money and the person would have been in need. And God don't operate like that. So, like I said, uh, you know, that wasn't God. And so, God's going to give me something. He'll bless me. You know what I'm saying? Even if I got to work for it. Excuse me, you know, with the job that I'm working, it don't pay no whole lot of half figures, but it's a job. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, my main uh, goal right now is just to keep it moving, keep some income coming in, you know, until God opens doors. You know, and like I said, I put in j for jobs that I like, many places, jobs that I really feel that I would have did some good, working with handicapped people, all type of things like that. And uh, that door hasn't been opened. So, like I said, I just keep moving until I find where I need to be. You know what I'm saying? Some door open. You know, church doors open. I still go to different churches. And, you know, where I haven't been. Well, I did. I just went to Kingdom. And, you know, I go around to make sure that I'm fitting. You know what I'm saying? Because when you start opening your mouth and you talk, everybody's not going to appreciate what you're saying. And a lot of people don't want to hear what you're saying. You know, they don't want to hear what I'm saying. And so it'll get uncomfortable. So when it gets uncomfortable, I know how to leave. I'm like Sam Smith. I'm good, I'm good at goodbyes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's one thing I love about walking with God. I've walked through all kind of trials and tribulations with him. And as you see, I'm suffering now. But still, I've learned a lesson. I'm like Paul. I learned how to be up some and I learned how what I learned how to base up. I learned how to be down. I've been in a lot of situations. But oh yeah. That's one gift. I love at first I didn't like that sound. That sound messed me up. I was like, oh, he good at good bass. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, it's sad. But then after I listened to it more and more, you know what I'm saying? Just sit down and just listen to the sound. Listen, I listen to the words. Sometimes you listen to the lyrics and all the little beat. Yeah, it throws me out. But when I sat down and I listened to the words, I could make out the words what he was saying. I was like, ah, oh, okay. I understand. You know, and then I saw the video. The video is very powerful. You know, I hate that. that I, I don't like that that you have to watch. I don't like music where you got to watch the video to figure out what they're saying. You know, I like the uh, I like the words. It's like Lil Wayne. When I first used to listen to Lil Wayne, yes, I listened to Lil Wayne. When I first listened to Lil Wayne, I was like, oh, he's just cussing all that. I, I didn't care for him. Well, he was with the group when I first heard it. So his little lyrics, I was like, nah, I don't even know what he's saying. That's when he was young. But then when he got older, he started coming out and he started talking. Oh, yeah. I, I like what he's saying. It, uh, Cole, when he's in there with Beyonce, now I'm a soldier. Now his, I, I like him. You know what I'm saying? I, I like Lil Wayne's rap. You know, I, I like what he said. I don't have to have the video at the point I'm making because when he's rapping, I can hear him. And you know my all-time favorite, my favorite rap artist in the, uh, well, yeah, my favorite. Well, I like LL Cool J, but the person that I could always do, knew what they was talking about, and they talked about poverty. They talked about what's going on in the world. They talked about they was an activist. Y'all know who that is. That's Tupac, you know. 
you know, when he talked about that, uh, keep your head up, you know what I'm saying? And I, I plus, I don't just listen to a person's words and they, and they work and they music. I listen to them privately. And so I listened to a lot of his interviews when he was in prison. I listened to him, his real talk, you know, his hard talk. I listened to the things he was saying before he got, uh, the first time he got shot and then after he got shot and, 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 uh, listened to his own voice before he died. You know, he's very, uh, very intelligent, very intelligent. Uh, came from, <laughs> woo, came from some people. You know, his mama, his mama's cold-blooded. You know what I'm saying? She's cool. I mean, you know, she's not cool, but the cool, she's cool. He came from some people that was thinking about the neighborhood. You know, his mom and daddy, they were people that was activists. They, and maybe the manner wasn't totally positive. I came out the way they wanted it to. But, you know, as far as standing up for their community, wanting to help their community, being involved in their community, caring about black people, that's what I love about it. And I love, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, Lord Jesus. That's what I'm talking about as far as the, us as a black people. God put something else on my heart. I'll get to that. But anyway, us as a black people, looking out for one another, we used to do that. We used to make sure if if some, if some a child was in the neighborhood and needed to be fed, we fed them. We seen that somebody was eating. We didn't sit back all talking all of that. And back in the day, if you think about it, well, no, we had homeless area. I know when I grew up in the projects in Clarksdale, the homeless people was on the corner. I don't even know. I think if Wayside wasn't there. I don't know if Wayside, nah, Wayside wasn't there. Because it was a big daddy was on the corner. Uh, Dan Coins, remember? And the, uh, uh, oh, God. First Leak was across the corner at one point. That's where I lived, where I grew up. It used to be like a strip club, a porn place that used to be next door to Dan Coins. Come on with it. And the funeral home I always been over there. That's where I grew up in Muse Candy Store. I went in there and just cheated and had me some chocolate turtles. Hello, oh my God. Anyway, Muse. We used to go back there and get the candy out of the garbage can and eat it. I ain't gonna name my clique that was with me, but we was all back there. We get that candy, we tore it up. We took it, you know what I'm saying? This, my brother snitched down us one time. I'm like, it could be poison. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, we used to go back there and eat that candy. Found it in the garbage. Like if they made a bad batch, they would throw it away. And they, you know what I'm saying? And uh, they had paper on and stuff. You know, anyway. Yeah, that was my childhood. But I was ransacked through alleys. Yeah, we had our little, we call ourselves a little gang. We eight, eight, eight or nine years old. We going through alleys and stuff. We hung around. I think we was like seven. You know what I'm saying? We straight up street. We never did stay in front of the house. We always, anyway. But yeah, back in the day. I oh, mean, I'm losing my point. But anyway, oh God, it's early in the morning. But uh, in the in the day, what I was making the point, thank you, Jesus. The homeless people stood on the corner. Usually, it was people drinking. You all this homeless, everybody laying and all over the street and all this and that. I mean, maybe it went out. I didn't see it because back in the day. The people that stood on the on the liquor store corners, usually somebody let them lay in on the couch. They were somebody's uncle. They were somebody's people. It was white and black that used to stand on that corner. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's standing up, uh, setting up our off of, uh, was that Shelby? That's not Shelby. It's Shelby. It's that Shelby, Shelby Street, you know. And, uh, yeah, uh, people was taking them in. We used to look out for one another, black people. What you need, a bowl of soup? Man, get off that corner. Come on, and get you a plate. That was, you know, that's what our auntie and everybody would tell you. Come and get a plate, man. You need something to eat. Put something on your stomach. You know what I'm saying? We had people stand on corners and talk and all of this type of thing. Get high, dance and everything on the corners. You know what I'm saying? Somebody always was cooking. Somebody was cooking home-cooked meals. Wasn't all these restaurants. Think about it. That's real talk. Wasn't no restaurants running around here selling a whole lot of chicken. The main restaurant you had back in the day when I was a young child was KFC. KFC was the main restaurant. I don't remember no whole lot of restaurants. I remember KFC and White Castle. Those were the main two restaurants. Because when I grew up, it wasn't, restaurants wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the thing. I was getting ready to say coach. It wasn't the thing. Back in the day, this is how I, how I lived. There was a bar. Anybody that grew up in, in Clarks, they'll know what I'm talking about. There used to be a bar. And it was a white bar. It was owned. And they patronized a lot of white people. You had a couple of blacks going, but mainly it was a lot of white people. And they cooked 
homemade hamburgers. Miss Geraldine, my mother's friend, would send me over there and get her two or three hamburgers. I think they was a dime or they was a quarter. Something like that. She wanted four of them. Miss Geraldine was a big lady. <laughs> and uh, she tell me, get what I want. But I would go in there and stand and I would get the hamburgers. Hamburgers, fries, or whatever. Mainly hamburgers. And she wanted mustard. They would put a, I mean, that real mustard. Dark yellow mustard. She wanted on her. And I'd take her burgers back. And she paid me or whatever. But yeah, and there was a little store right next door to her. That was our market. What was that street? Jefferson. On Jefferson Street. Sitting on Jefferson was a little store. But yeah, man, we had an ice cream pile, all that. Everything was fresh. Everything was homemade. I was fresh. You know, wasn't all of these stores and everything around. Then down the street, we had uh, the Kroger's. We used to get on cardboard and slide down the hill. But other than that, mm -mm. we had the S&T store, whatever the store was. But yeah, all of that, nah. You, everybody cooked. Your parents, your grandmama, your great auntie. Somebody cooked some. Somebody was frying some chicken. My mother fried chicken four or five o'clock in the morning. So when we came home from school, we was eating. We had eggs and fresh eggs and bacon and liver pudding and eggs. Oh, man. We had all that type of stuff like that. You know, times change, true. Yeah, we in a different time. But sometimes it's not bad to go back, especially when you see <laughs> mm, the way the world's crumbling now. Yeah fast. That's why they had the Tower of Babel. You're moving too fast and God will slow you down. Because <laughs> you get so much technology you forget about God. God's not in the computer. <laughs> you know, you forget about him. Start cloning things and thinking you God. Nobody can take the place of God. And then, then you piss him off and then when he show you, then you sit back talking about, oh, I didn't know he could do that. And here's what's devastating too. After they said that crime occurred with Paddock and all this violence and the tor tornadoes and the hurricanes and the earthquakes and all these things. Every time they happen, what happens? People start running to church. Why are you always waiting to run to church? You need to be up in church. You need to be with God to begin with. Then you're not running nowhere. Then you get some type of understanding of what's going on. And to be honest, the things wouldn't happen like they do if you stayed up under God, you know. Pick up your Bible. Pick up your Bible and look at all the times when mostly turbulence, when Noah was getting on the ark, when when uh Sodom and Gomorrah, when they went in there and it, and and people tripped me out with that. I don't know if it, what it is. I was talking about that and I said, darn it, did I say what God wanted me to say when I said, yeah, God kills people too. And then I was like, yeah, it's true. And I thought about an illustration. Look at it, Sodom and Gomorrah. God said, go in there and give me what ten people, or whatever. He went in and he couldn't think of ten. He said, well, get, get, get to the point, give me two people that sin sinless. You know what I'm saying? Because he wiped them out. <laughs> Who did it? Did Satan kill those people? No. God took and banished them people. Tore them up. Then told that woman, don't look back now. And that's a fan right there. Stop going backwards. My cousin Carlin taught me that. that. I used to get in relationships going backwards. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes your baby, daddy, mama stuff, you know, it's different. <laughs> But constantly going back to the same old relationship, going back to the same old thing, same old evil. Keep picking up something. Keep picking up a drink. Keep picking up some dope. And it's tearing you up. You know what I'm saying? Keep picking up something that's harming you. It's like picking up a rattlesnake every time. And keep forgetting that it could bite you. Because maybe it didn't bite you. The only time, because see, I got bit. I did the same thing myself. I kept going back. Oh, man, I'm going to pick up this Code 45. You know, I'm not knocking that brand because that's what I drank. You know, I'm going to get my J. Roger, you know what I'm saying, and, and do what I do. You know what I'm saying? I was fine with it. I had some nice time. I'm laughing. Until one day I picked it up and it bit me. <laughs> it was a cobra. It bit me. You know what I'm saying? It started just, devil just taking control of my life. Because I kept trying to put it down and it kept biting me and I kept picking it back up. And I was like, I took, got to the point I was holding it. I was at the liquor store like every day because I had to have it. My body craved it. And so I had to say, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Can't be no two captains up in here, you know. And at the time I had one child still at home. So I had to look at that, you know. And thank God at the time I was drinking. I'm not going to lie. My bills was paid. I, I, that's not my story. I didn't lose everything. I still had a car. I had all these things. God bless them. I had a place, a roof over my head. You know what I'm saying? I had money in my pocket. So I, I'm thankful. You know what I'm saying? 
And like I said, sometimes I wasn't hitting as bad as I am now. It's like, you know, a whole lot of stuff start popping off more. But like I said, though, it start controlling me. Don't have something that controls you. God, yes. But something that... Excuse me. Something that will make you sick. You know, I had gotten to the point one time, man, I was so, so under the control of, uh, of alcohol. Man, I got sick one time and threw up. I had a 30-pack of uh, Miller's. We was out partying there. Oh, my auntie's house. We was in the backyard. We partying. He, I, I think the 30 case might have been. I don't know if that was the start or if that was toward the end. It was nighttime. I done hit the hoop. No, I had already been drinking early that day. Because, like I said, it already was telling me when you get up, get you something to drink. So, I had already been drinking that day. So, it was toward the night. Let me remind you, I was weighing 110, which I'm getting back down to that weight now, you know. But, uh, uh, I was like 110. I don't drink all day. So, drinking all day to me means I probably drank probably two eight packs of Coke 45. Because I was bam. So, probably, I know I had a pack. Uh, two tilts, whatever, uh, double deuce, and so like I said, it was toward that night, so it was Miller time. So I don't know how many I drank that or that. I know I drank over six Millers. I threw up. I actually threw up, and I was like, "Whoa, it must have been too much right there." That Miller's bad. <laughs> Woo! Not only do you, the, 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 man, you just get the craving to act in the house so bad, and it's controlling you so much, it's, you get stupid. Because, you know what I'm saying, that's, that's a theory I have. Oh, my God, it must be bad. It must be a bad batch. Threw up. I'm telling you. Threw up. I'm talking about threw up to tears came up out of my ass. Went, rinsed my mouth, and you know, you don't know. <laughs> but what I did, what did I do? I went back and got me some more. Maybe that went down the wrong way. I used to drink and not even coat my stomach. I'm talking about that was me because I thought I was a scientist. I knew. Come on with it. Now, if I take and eat my cousins and all my family, eat something. Did you eat something today? A lot of time I be lying. I haven't eaten nothing. You know, because what I did was when I got up in the, that morning, I didn't want nothing. I didn't have a taste for nothing because it was controlling me. It was telling me to get me something to drink. So I would take and drink me a cold 45, whether it was warm or cold yet, yeah, because I love them icy cold. But if it wasn't cold yet, yeah, I drink it warm, and I call that my champagne. Because if you drink, I ain't going to try to encourage them. But when you drink them when they warm, it's like a little champagne, like drinking champagne. I would Jay Roger. And uh, I would coat my stomach, and then I because it got barley in it. <laughs> I would tell myself, it has barley in it, and it's good for you. It's a nutrient. <laughs> I'm reading the can and stuff like that. Plus, I'm thinking about my baby Billy. Woo, Billy, it works every time. So, yeah, I wouldn't eat. And then later on, when I would see somebody, you know, my cousin, they don't cook something fresh. You know, some of them Polish sausages, they don't throw out there or something like that. They boil that, you know. Uh, somebody got hot dog, something like that, you know. I might take a little piece of that, you know, or maybe a piece of chicken or something like that. But other than that, I didn't eat. I wouldn't eat all day. I drank. I just got to the point, you know, like I said, I'm holding the cobra in my hand. It's biting me, but I'm, I, I'm drinking, you know. I was laughing with a guy today, you know, because he was telling me about a, some lady beat up her old man or something. And, and you know, got, we shouldn't be laughing, but hey. Anyway, he was telling me about it, and uh, in the process, we was talking about our area. And I said, man, he was saying, uh, he's telling me about the area. I said, I know about that area. I said, I used to get high right there. I used to say, and I named my people that used, used to run the streets down there. They knew my people. One of my people used to walk back and forth. And I used to go visit my people and sit and drink with him. And I used to, I was drinking so much over that area. I was telling him, I would pull up. I remember when it was owned by a white couple. It was before some uh, Muslims took it over. They muzzled my Indian. But at the time, it used to be a white couple. If I'm not mistaken, I think her name was Bunny. It was a white couple, a white lady and a man. They used to own it. And when you pull up to the window, you would see his pistol laying on the table. Oh, man. I, man, they was cool. They was friendly. I loved it. I loved that. And then later on, uh, uh, they knew me. They was familiar with me. They knew my cousin and everything like that. They was nice, you know. 
And then uh, next thing I know, I went back and somebody bought them out. And uh, some Muslims was there. And they was cool, though. The ones that ended up taking over when when they first got there, they was cool. But what tripped me out, I was pulling, you know, they would see me. Hi, how you doing? All I had. And the next thing, you know, you know, they be flirting and stuff like that. And I didn't pay them no attention. But they got to the point, man, I would pull up to the window. Man, they done pushed the beer out the window. I was like, <laughs> they done pushed it out. Here. Take the package. Take the package. I'm like, you know, wait a minute. I have one. Like, Go and take it. And they were just so familiar with me, you know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, I come out, I spend my money. You know, when I get paid, I get my Corona and my line. And, you know, if I'm really balling, I get me a 12-pack. You know what I'm saying? I give me two 12-packs. And so when anybody know about a liquor store window, when a 12-pack of bottles of uh, Coronas, yeah, I'm bringing back some memories, they'll take a send out the first six-pack, and then they got to send out the second one. They would send out both of them to me because I was frequenting the place so much. You know, they got familiar with me. And I was like, oh, Lord Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Lord, you know what I'm saying? I had to look at that. You're like, darn, they already know what I'm drinking, you know what I'm saying? They, I got issues. And I started looking at my behavior. I started looking at things, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, holding that cobra in your hand. And like I said, though, I'm getting back to what reinu re re what I was talking about. It's like I said, yeah, that money was there. And I'm thanking God that I'm sharing this with you because God took that power out of me. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus, for releasing that. Because, yeah, I was feeling just, you know, a little turmoil. Like, God, you know, you put that in front of me, then you took it away. You know, and then I start flashing back about my car being stolen and all this. You know, and that's how the devil wants you to do. He wants you to hate God. I don't hate God. I'm not going to hate God. You know what I'm saying? You know, I can look at myself, but I'm not going to hate God. You know what I'm saying? I look at that. I question things. And like I said, now that I've been talking on on this, I realize, yeah, it was the devil. You know, then I, it made me remember how... Back in the day, he had tried to tempt me with that weed. And uh, did I ever tell y'all I took the weed? I'm sorry, I got off point. I didn't do nothing with the weed. I didn't sell it. It was a nice little bag, too. It was about 20. <laughs> it was about a 20. I ended up throwing it down the sewer. Because I thought about it. I was going to give it to somebody. And then I thought about it. I said, well, why? If, if it's detrimental to you, if I'm holding a cold, it make, drinking makes me hold a cold in my hand. Sometimes weed makes a problem, which I ain't never heard nobody really do nothing on weed. But anyway, if, if something's devastating to me, why would I pass it to somebody else? So, and plus, number one, I don't know what somebody mixed with it. That was a hit, too. I don't know what was in it. So I could give it or sell it to somebody, and it could harm somebody. So I threw it down the sewer, you know. It was hard. <laughs> I'm not going to play with you. You know how you put it in your hand like, because eh, I kept thinking I can't stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Weed is a medicine. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And I knew it was weed because I smelled it. You know I know what weed smell like. Yes. Mm. So anyway, I threw it away. But like I said, just be careful out there. Be very careful. Just watch your steps. You know, watch your frequency. You know, that's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? When I say watch your frequency, watch people that's feeding into you. Because if you listen to my other video, I was talking about how I was listening to Pastor Jason. The message he was giving, it wasn't for me. I was giving or take it. Talking about watch the spores and, and all of this and that. And go in and uh, 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 stay on a job. Even if you don't uh, fit in. You know what I'm saying? Stay on a job. And, you know, and, and, and uh. Uh, stop whining about the job's bad. Now, nah, uh-uh. That word wasn't for me. God didn't tell me that. And I can let you know that, yeah, God was telling me, you know, don't be around evil. He said, you you stay around evil, you become evil. So God let me, allow me to go ahead and leave that place, you know. But, um, you know, and another thing on my mind, you know, like I said, it's early in the morning. I'm going to get up, get ready. I got to go to this job today. But another thing that was on my mind, you know, I want to say this too, because like I said, it's like I'm saying goodbye, but it's a long goodbye. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm trying to think which part I want to say first. Anyway, I'm just going to talk. Um. Uh, Like I said, when I'm laying, when I get up in the morning, which I was up at two something, I had awakening too, and God be putting things on my mind, and then you know, and I try, I, you know, I'm not in that, I'm kind of in that sleep mode, so I don't have an opportunity to put this video on and talk about it. So I'm gonna say everything I need to say. 
uh, for one thing, I know I'm getting sick. And the man, somebody, I forget where I was at. I was somewhere, somebody sat behind me and kept coughing. I'm like, if you got a cough attack, why don't you move? Don't sit behind people coughing. I hate that when people sit behind you and just keep coughing. Yes, I said that. I hate that when you cough because you pass a germ. And people, you know what I'm saying? I think I done caught a cold. Man, I hate that. Somebody sat there and just keep coughing. I don't know if they're covering their mouth. And I, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not impolite to turn around. Anyway, I'm getting off the subject, aren't I? <laughs> but what I wanted to say is, uh, <laughs> see how the door would show up? Cause, you know, anyway. Back in the day, if somebody would have told me, 2010, anybody would have ever told me that I would be on here making a video. I would be opening my mouth, telling y'all all the things that I'm telling y'all. Telling things about me, telling the stuff, talking about all the job situations, all that. I would have told them they was a lie. I can, when I'm talking to you, talking on these videos, and I put this on Instagram, I got so close. This one I probably put on Instagram. I'm going to pass this out to everybody because... um. Uh, which of the other ones, I'm going to hit all my videos and I'm going to merge a lot of them together and put them in a th thing so I can save them. And uh, I'm going to do a twist on some things, you know what I'm saying? I'll let God work on me on some things. But like I said, I'm going to leave this because uh, they're not getting $60. So, hello. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, shut up, Jen. Okay, anyway, if somebody would have told me that I was doing, I, I would be doing this, I would have never believed it. Uh, I would have said that was a lie. And, uh. This just had God to use you and he'll change you, you know, especially when you're older. Like I said, I started off, he was putting me in school and I couldn't believe that. I don't know what's going to happen with that because I, I, since I didn't pay him, they won't move my, uh, they won't give my transcript. So maybe this is the end of the road with that. But uh, I wouldn't have ever believed it, you know, the things that he has me say. So this is not me is the point I'm making. It's God. It's not all God, but some of it's me. Because you know when I'm talking about me, it ain't talking about God. <laughs> so, like I said, these are the things that he's changed in my life and the things that he's given me. And like I said, I don't want to say the thing. Don't ever get that twisted. Because really, I was laying here and I was thinking about it. Said The stuff I be saying to you, talking about helping black people. Helping, when I started that, I was talking about help, help, helping uh, build a guy or a church. Helping uh, get people together. You know what I'm saying? Helping people in that way. And, and this person next door, this thing next door to me so evil and kept doing so much stuff to me and niggerish stuff, all that type of stuff until it's like all of a sudden God just turned my way. Everything's so toxic. I'm not angry. I'm bitter. You know what I'm saying? At her, I'm angry. But all of this or that, yeah. I'm like, how did this turn? How, why am I talking about helping the black community in this way? I was talking about cleaning up the neighborhood. Now God got me talking about uh, 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 changing the neighborhood, black people changing, black people waking up, black people realizing who's for them and who's against them. I'm like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Where'd that come from? Because for man, every man for himself. Like my friend was saying, you know, I said, don't, we, don't you think, well, how do you feel about black people helping themselves? He said, I feel like every man should be for himself. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And uh, sometimes I think about that. I need to get mad, you know. And uh, so saying all this stuff I'm saying right here, it ain't me. It's, it's God telling me to say all that stuff right there. Because like I said, I hate saying it because it's like nobody's listening. It's like I'm wasting my breath. People going to do what they want to do. Black people will stab you in your back sometimes quicker than a white man or any other culture will stab you in your back. Because that's what I've been experienced. I've experienced many times. So then for me to be standing here, you know, this is real time. I'm just being real with you. Because like I said, I done laid in the bed and it's what said something. I've been laying here with you. I got to get up. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm going to put this out there. Yeah, I'm not like, oh, she's saying something so she can track. I'm not getting paid nothing. That's what I'm saying. Then I'm coming out of my pocket $60 to say what? Talking to some people that don't care about themselves? That's real time. That's how I feel. That's how Janice feel. Buchanan feel. Yeah, you ain't listening to me. You don't give a damn about the neighborhood. You don't care nothing about the next person. Somebody just got murdered yesterday. I don't know what it, what it, what played out, but somebody got murdered. Some uh, my cousin standing in the store somewhere. Somebody just held up a store at gunpoint. You know, so what am I saying? It's not reaching nobody. You you holding up places and robbing places that's in the community to try to benefit the community. That's uplifting the community. You turn it down, so why am I talking? You're not listening to me. 
you're robbing steal from people in the neighborhood, stores in the neighborhood that come down here to try to make the neighborhood better, that beautify the neighborhood, but yet you don't do nothing to the stores and stuff like that that don't participate or give anything to the community. My thing is this right here. You have a lot of businesses down here, which I'm going to stop talking out of this little cliche stuff because I'm at the point where I, I really don't give up. The West End is considered the poor side of town. I was trying to sugarcoat stuff, but apparently you don't give us. The West End is considered the poor side of town. When you go in the West End, take a picture of the West End, and then you take that picture of the West End, all the little businesses in the West End, take a picture of every business in the West End that makes money. Take that picture and take it down there to the rich side. Take it on Boys Town Road. Take that picture down in Middle Town and see how many of the businesses that you see in the West End you see down there. Tell me that. Show me that right there. Look at yourself. You ain't building up. You building down. You put giving money and, 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 and the businesses that you're going to, they expensive. They more expensive than the average store. You've given them money. How many of those businesses that you give it to in the West End? Black and whatever nationality they are. How many of those businesses? I'm not talking about Kroger's. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about no crows and stuff like that. I'm talking about of your little businesses, your little store corners. How many of them are participating and giving back to you? How many of them are uh, signed up with toys for time? Are they, they can have a promotion where they're giving you bikes to the black people in the community or to the poor people in the community. How many of them are, uh, are uh, helping with the LG&E bill, signed up with the LG&E program that's helping, the, helping you? What are they doing? They're, they're, you're giving them your money, all of these businesses, and I'm going to say privy. All the businesses in the West End, how many of them are giving back to you? What are they doing for you? Can you look at their records and see what they're doing for you? Well, how much are they contributing back to you? How are they helping uplift the community? Don't talk to me about they the only store that comes down there to the now. I don't want to hear that. Because black businesses go down there and they try to help you, but you go in and you rob them. You go in there and you spit on the people that own it. You call them all kind of names when they have, when a black person has a business. Irma's opened up back down there. I don't know. She's not getting too much business. There's a lady that sells stuff over on the corner 31st and Broadway. She's not getting too much business. She sells nice used clothing. She's a goodwill. But Who's patronizing her place? I'm going to shout out. I got to get the name of her business. Like I said, I don't know. It's probably be my last video. But she has a business down there. There's a couple of black barber shops. There's numerous black barber shops. Go patronize them. You know, do for your black people what you're doing for the everybody else. Like I said, open your eyes and see. God opened my eyes. Like I said, he opened my eyes and that white woman next door to me, she opened my eyes. And this is something I want to put out here and then I'm getting out for her. Like I said, any business in your neighborhood, look, somebody giving that trick-or-treat candy. I'm talking about trick, giving that trick-or-treat candy. Giving out a, a kind word. Giving out a positive message. You know. Uh, I want to add this. Because like I said. When I'm laying her stuff on my mind. God put stuff on my mind. And things you know. He's saying I should have said this. I should have said that. So I'm, I'm going to should have said. And I'm going to say. I'm going to say this. And like I said. Um, I've seen a thing that some, some black people was frustrated. Uh, with some of the stores in the area. I did see that. <laughs> I seen that yesterday. You know, I'm not smirking about it, but I seen that some of you are waking up. So let me pat you on your back for that. I commend you for that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I see some people waking up and, and being disgruntled and and seeing, you know, I heard somebody talk about it, but yeah, you know, so I'm not new. I'm not the only one talking about it. It's a lot of people that talk about it, you know. Like I said, I got a friend and he been selling stuff from his car for some years. I'm talking about years. He had his hustle. You know, he sell from his car. He sell all kind of stuff, little items and stuff like that. Yeah, I patronized him before, but he sells all kind of stuff. You know, but you know what's powerful about this black man? And this is going to mess you up. 
You know, like I said, I have friends, so don't ever try to put me in a box. God, God, God don't be, put, he's not put in a box. You can't put God in a box because he's too big. And I'm not saying I'm God, but I try to be godly. And I, but I say what God wants me to say, and I associate with people he allows me to because God was with prostitutes where people would run their mouth. My friend that sells all his little items, he, he don't believe in, uh, he believes in God, but he don't believe like I believe. He practices mostly like I believe it's Muslim, and he don't pray the prayers that I pray, but he's my friend, and he's a black man, and I respect him because he gets out here and he makes sure that he has food on his table, and he has a lovely son, you know, he provides for him and his, but what I want to say about him that keeps me connected to him, you know, when I see him and stuff like that, which he's popped up in the church, what I like about him is that you can't put him in a box. Because if you get to knowing, you know, he's been, a, he said some crazy stuff to me before. And sometimes I sit back like, oh my God, you know. But all in the hall, he's my friend. You know, friends is not, everybody don't say what you want them to say and act the way you want them to act. You love a person for who they are. And like I said, what I love about him, he's always talking about feeding the body. You know, he fasts. You know what I'm saying? He does stuff like he eats healthy. But he gives you a positive word. And he, uh, he will tell you how he feel. He will tell you how he feel. And, and that's beautiful. And that's rare to get somebody to straight out tell you how they feel. And not try to sugarcoat everything. I say what they think you want them to say. You know. So I, I love that about him. And that's why we friends. Because I like it. He keep it real. <laughs> you know. He keep it 100. Demetra. She got that song out 100. Yeah. He's 100. You know, he got a whole lot of controversy going on. Don't get it twisted. I know all of that stuff that people try to say about him. But, hey, they talked about Jesus. And I know without a doubt they talk about me. I used to get talked about all the time. I'm getting talked about right now. And I'm quite sure a lot of people hate me, especially in these little stores around here and people that's not doing what they should be doing to help the community. So I'm quite sure I'm hated. And they don't like what I say. But you know what? I really don't give up. You know what I'm saying? I really don't care. Until you start paying some bills up in her and doing for me. And even then, you ain't going to control me because you're helping up in her. Because if you're helping me, then I'm helping you. It's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. I had to learn that the hard way. Because I used to be that way. You do for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I tell on myself. But God's telling me to say this and then I'm out. Like I said, it might be my last video. If not, then I try to learn how to upload on the phone. You know what I'm saying? But, uh. I said last video was the last video. This right here, God saying say it. <laughs> I might be talking and they cut it off while I'm talking. Hello. But uh uh it is what it is. I'm gonna go pay the other part of my LG and E bill with the money that I had for this. The sixty dollars that could have went here, I'm gonna go pay on my uh pay the rest of my LG and E bill. Yes, I am. I'm gonna make sure that that's what's gonna be done, what's needed, not what's wanted. So, like I said, I'm not getting paid for these videos, and that's the main thing I do. And I'm not into watching TV all day, and I don't watch stories and all that. I just have the Internet, and I can do everything what I'm doing here on my phone. So, anyway, I'm not prejudiced. I don't want anybody to say that. I have white people in my life. I've been around white people. One of my best people, she's white and German, you know, and I love her in a, in a godly way. And... You know what I'm saying? I've been around a lot of white people, so don't ever get that twisted. You know, and I'm not mad at no specific race. I'm just saying what God say say. Uh, and I'm just trying to get black, black people to own, they, own, own the businesses in your area and patronize them and build them up. Don't go in there cussing them out. If you don't, why would you dog out a black business, but you don't dog out nobody else's business? You want to run in here and steal and throw stuff all over the shelf and call people out of their name when they have a black business, but you don't do the same to nobody else. I mean, you know, wake up, smell the coffee. This is the thing. I have a lot of white people. I'm around a lot of white people. I, I'm around people, white people that don't feel, think, I believe what she does. And I know there's more good people, more good white people than it is that person over there. You know, I'm quite sure they don't they don't even condone what she, it was, she had a little clique that was condoning what she did. Yeah, evil begets evil, and, and evil hang around evil. She 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 has that. You know what I'm saying? But there's more people that 
dislike what she's doing, what she stands for, and then I call her. And so, like I said, I have a lot of white people. Like I said, Miss K and when I grew up, Charlie Marie, I grew up around white people. And I got to look at that. You know, Miss Bonnie and all of them. All of those people I have to remember. God put in my life in a positive man. Why I, I'm next door to this hateful, evil person. Like I said, only thing I could see is God opened my eyes. If it wasn't for her, all this change and stuff like that, I'm quite sure it wouldn't have been made. I don't know why God was taking me one way and then he's switching it over talking about this. And like I said, that's for now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I don't like, I'm saying this because, like I said, I won't be making no videos unless I pull them up on my phone. Um, uh, I signed up for this program and uh, 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 Chance the Rapper, Chance the Rapper shouted out to me, you know, because he's doing some positive things. Uh, he's trying to help out in the neighborhood, you know, and he's talking about his organization and what they do and stuff like that. So I'm not running my mouth to be running my mouth. I'm saying that there are people that think and believe like I do. So don't get it twisted that, hey, she's crazy. She's just running her mouth. Yeah, I get shout-outs shout from certain people. You know what I'm saying? But it don't, it don't float my boat because God humbles me. And I have a friend in my life that used to always tell me, you know, my little pop, she'd tell me, Jen, it's not about you. <laughs> You're not that important. <laughs> she's about four feet tall. You know what I'm saying? She's like five feet tall. She'll look up at me and she put me right down to her side real quick. And so that plays in my mind all the time. Anytime I try to think, oh, ooh, chance to rap. No, nah, I can't think like that. Because she put me in check so quick, you know. She, she, it just plays in my head. You're not that important. Because <laughs> I'll be thinking, ooh, this happened, that happened. Oh, no, it's not. I was they staring at me. They looking at me, you know. I used to think that. And she said, they probably was looking at something else. You're not that important. <laughs> she broke my heart. But then she humbled me because I was like, oh, man, and it was true. I'm thinking, you know, all up in my head. That's why I tell you, I, if I'm in my head, I'm quiet. When I'm verbalizing some stuff, talking to myself, oh, yeah, I'm cool because I'm letting it out. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm looking, oh, it wasn't even that deep. But, yeah, yeah. And then if I need to talk to somebody, I pull up on them. But, yeah, she broke me down. And like I said, uh, it's a little foundation, and he uh, he, he holler, hey, to me. And I was like, for real, chance of rapper. But, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And so I look. When somebody say something to me, I look him up. And I see he's talking about black people getting together. Talking about us helping each other. And he was pulled over by the police. And he was like, yeah, our police is not bad. Look at his video where he got pulled over this year. This month, I believe. This month. And look at it. And he's talking in there. He got a baby car seat in the back. And the police pulled him over. And he was like, yeah, you know, I don't know what they're going to say. He said, our police are not bad. He said, but you do get some people on there that's really uh, uh, don't like blacks and all this and that. You know, and then the police ended up coming to him and just gave him a warning. Hello. But uh, gave him a warning. But, yeah, you know, that's one thing I love about technology. That's not a bad thing. You know, that you can videotape things. You know, it can be used for good. It can be used for bad. But all in all, it, it's good to have, and that's why, anyway, I'm not getting on that, because that's about, that's me, and it's about God, but anyway, I don't dislike white people, I'm around white people all the time, I hold white people's hands on, on many occasions, so don't ever get it twisted that I'm angry with them, and a real white person, I already know what I'm saying, white people know what I'm talking about, they know I'm not speaking hate, they know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about black unity, Black people looking out for themselves and speaking up. And if you and if you go on YouTube, like I said, you know I'm a YouTuber. If you go on YouTube, you will be surprised. If you get real, 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 real honest and get on YouTube, pray about it, and then get on YouTube, you will find white police officers, white priests, white pastors. You'll find a whole lot of white people on there that's addressing all these issues that I'm talking about. Not in the way that I'm, I don't know, they probably are, I didn't get it, I don't try to go see, critique what somebody else is saying, then take that part right there, I don't do that, but I glance at, I, I, when I go into, y'all know how YouTube is, you push up one thing and then I, they bombard you with the rest, it'll co constantly pop up on your site, so anyway, there's a, a white police officer talking about Exodus and talking about uh, when people were slaves back then and why they were slaves, I didn't get deep into this conversation, but they, basically that's where he started going. 
and you know he was talking about he's a white man and how he want to basically he understands the black man's struggle and stuff like that and you know how he want to improve it so I don't know if he's still a police or he was a retired police but like I said sometimes I just glance on through because some people's videos get long like man <laughs> but anyway uh, so yeah, I'm not like it. You know, I'm quite sure white people want us to advance. They want us to, well, I'm not, yeah, they want us to advance and not be so violent toward one another. You know, you know, there's one white person all the time that to be afraid of black people and all that, so I don't even listen to all of that. So you got your haters on there, but like I said, we need to take a look at our actions. We need to take a look at our neighborhood. And I'm not saying, <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, am I saying those neighborhoods are better? Yes, I am saying those neighborhoods are better than our neighborhoods. Uh, a, a, a blind dog would say that uh, the, uh, those areas far out are better than our neighborhood. Because in our neighborhoods, including man, in our neighborhood, how many times do you go outside and you see a dead body laying on the ground? How many times do you go outside and you got to turn your child's face so they don't look at this dead body? How many times do you have to sit and tell your child, wait a minute, I heard gunshots, don't go out. How many times do you have to live in a neighborhood and you have to holler, get down on the floor. Are they at Boston Road saying that? I had middle town. Are they in the Highland saying that all the time? No, nah, I'm quite sure they not. So yeah, that neighborhood area is better than our neighborhood. It's way better than our neighborhood. When people out there, and this gets me, and it's been pissing me off, and I've been wanting to say this, and I didn't get an opportunity to address it, so I'm going to address it real quick now. I signed up for an organization to try to get some help so I could get some funds to take and help beautify the neighborhood because they came to me. I didn't come to them. They came to me. So I signed up for it. So they hit me back. Oh, we sorry. We're unable to, uh, to offer you a grant. We really want people that's going to talk about making a change in the neighborhood. Do you not know that if a chair or a person that's violent or however feeling upset can go outside and see some flowers, see some roses, see a building that's not all boarded up, looking towed up, and uh, abandoned houses in the neighborhood, towed up, burnt up. Don't you know that that'll uplift a chair or a person's spirit? So how dare you come to me and try to tell me how to address my people? I know what it takes. I know when I'm walking. If I walk down the street and I see the street that don't have all kind of litter and paper on it, I respect that street. I'm not going to throw litter out. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spit all the time because I do have bad habits of spitting. I tell them myself. But I'm not going to be spitting on the street. I'm going to be, oh, okay. I see respect. I'm going to respect that street. If I go down the street and I see less abandoned houses that are, that's not all boarded up in a nasty manner, then, ah, oh, okay, that's a nice, I, 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 I don't mind getting out walking, which when I didn't have, I, when I was walking, I walked like I told you where I walked, from whatever, 28th and Broadway, 28th and Broadway, uh, all the way to uh, 28th and, uh, what was that, Dumanil? Yeah, near 28th, yeah, 28th and Dumanil. So I seen all kind of area. I seen some black businesses. I seen where the dollar store got robbed so many times that they closed it up. I seen that past some churches and stuff. So yeah, you know, I seen fields and stuff where the grass was high. You know, I seen where the store was and it collapsed on a man and killed a man. The man was buried up under there. The man died where he was working on a store. Be digging in a building. That man's dead. Yeah, I passed that. I could feel that right there. I could feel. It. I could feel it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that big old hole in the building. I remember they was over there doing all that stuff and it didn't look safe. But that's what I'm talking about. They was getting down to inspectors about that. If you don't care about your community, if you do not, if you do not, if I do not, if I do not, if you do not, if I do not, if you do not, I do not care about my community, where I live, the zip code that I'm in, the way the zip code is portrayed in the system, in UPS system, in the government system, if we don't care, who then shall care? If you don't care about your children, what your children see, the violence that, that they see, the words, the, the cussing, and how your child is, is portrayed, how your neighborhood is portrayed, why do you think somebody else should care? Who, who does that? Who, if you don't care about where you live, you don't care about killings and all the murders there and being identified as a neighborhood, it's unsafe to go into. 
Don't go in the West End. That's the worst. Don't go in the West End. I always battle down there. Oh, you go down the West End, especially if you're trying to get sold by something. You go down in the West End, you be sitting down there. Oh, the West End, that's worse. I definitely don't go past such and such. Bull crap. You can go anywhere and get high. I can go in a dollar store and get me a dollar beer and I'm straight. So, what's that? I can go on, I can go walk on 4th Street where they got 4th Street last and I can get a beer. I can go on Friday's and get a beer. So, what? So, get that negativity out of your mouth. That's why I'm saying. It's not just the government and stuff. You got a lot of black people that put us out there like that, man. And I was guilty of it myself. Oh, um, yeah, you know. I knew certain areas, you know, certain areas you don't go in. And it wasn't just for no, it wasn't about no dope, because I don't, I didn't do no dope. So it wasn't about that. You know what I'm saying? I smoked, I had smoked weed before and drank, but I wasn't no person to go frequent places in the back. But as far as getting high, I knew what areas not to go into where you might have something pop out. <laughs> I put it that way, real talk. But other than that, nah, uh-uh. And my car down, I don't care where I'm at. If I got to walk through the west and I walk. And to be honest with you, when I go to the port, I go to the port. I used to, I, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. I love going to the port. I like Chickasaw Park. I like Shiny Park. And I think, I meditate. I mean, it needs to be cleaned up a little more, you know, but I mean, it's beautiful. I used to go to Elliott Park and sit, you know, and, and uh, one thing about that park right there, man, I don't care what you do, boy. It's always some people gathering. They pop off sometime and get violent. But, boy, they'll gather right there. They used to throw horseshoes back over there. But they get together right there. They they hang in that park. That park stay busy right there. So, now nah, I don't walk and meditate over there. You know, but I've seen the kids kicking and play and run through the water. But, um, like I said, I'm not against white people. You know what I'm saying? But, like I said, uh, they want they want better for you. You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody ain't is not hating. There's opportunities out there. You know, it's not that they hand is the only hand open for you to get it, but any hand that opens up, get what you need to get. Take out of it. Forget what everybody talking about. Get it. Get what you can get. If some organizations or some programs open up where you need some help, open it. Go and get it. You know. But uh, like I said, now I hold white people's hand all the time. So now I'm I'm not prejudiced. I'm not no racist. I'm just saying, well, that's why I be getting here. I be like, God, say what? You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute, Lord, it's all I got a racist. I, 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 yeah, you making me kind of evil. And it's like, now nah, God said, say what I said. You know, and when Elijah went and told them, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, you better get right. You know, when they, all the prophets and men, they was telling people get right. And they wasn't talking to themselves. It was like Elijah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I, I don't want to say the stuff I'm saying. You just say it. You know what I'm saying? You be obedient because when you don't say it, believe me, God got a way of making you say what he wants you to say. He got a way of making me say it. You see, I'm saying it, don't you? I'm going to hurry up and get it out because I'm trying later and it just kept, <laughs> it kept festering like gas, <laughs> you know, festering in me. So I had to get it out. You know what I'm saying? When I get it out, if you notice, I don't have that stress and that strain. I don't have that stress in my stomach and stuff. So anyway like i said i'm not like that but like i said if you don't care about your neighborhood who else is gonna care and anybody will tell you when you go in a neighborhood and you see it pretty and beautiful you respect it you go in a neighborhood the houses all abandoned the door tore off you know what i'm saying it looks like people keep going in and out the door and you know you ain't got no respect for that place you're like oh man i don't even care nothing about it I, i'm gonna walk, walk down the street throw paper out of the car throw cups out of the car i don't care nothing about the street do donuts. I, I was setting up. Went to the little Goodwill over near Portland. I'm not going to say what type of person it was. But dude, he's in the parking lot near the Goodwill. On the side near Metro PC S. Across the street from Boone Gas Station. He's in the parking lot doing donuts. What? What? Dude, I, I'm just sitting in the car. I don't even know if he see me. I'm just sitting in the car. And he... He, he looked to see if anybody's looking. So, he's in the car. He's going to proceed. It's a little parking lot there before you get the subway. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He's going to sit there and proceed to do the first donut. A donut is when you go around in a circle at a fast speed. He did the first one. So, I'm sitting there like, okay, maybe he's test driving the car to brakes or whatever. Now, 
this asshole proceeded to do it again. Let me tell you, a child about what? A lady and a baby had just come out of that store. Had just come out of the store, a lady and a baby. She had to grab her baby's hand. He just came out doing donuts. And where did he go? In the PCS. Metro PCS with a box of pizza. But you did all them donuts and you could have took somebody's life. And then you would have been standing there talking about, ooh, oops, I'm sorry. Like I said, man, I, I, like I said, just walk through some neighborhoods and just see. See how people carry on in one neighborhood and how they wouldn't dare do it in another. That's all I'm trying to say. I want the West End to have respect and I want it to have honor. That's what I want. I want, I want, like when I go, man, I just want respect and honor. Just like, man, I went to the uh, post office. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The post office. There's a black man there. I'm not going to describe it, but y'all know who I'm talking about. God bless his heart and, you know, all his heart. That man's been there forever. When I was a little girl, that man was there at that post office. And here comes this black lady in there, not from Louisville. She's in there and she disrespected him. She tried to disrespect the man, but the man's older, so he really had tuned out. <laughs> he been there so long, he tuned out. And she running her mouth. She's trying to agitate him. That's why I tell y'all, I just look. Respect. But she's not from here. Brother, you here or not, though, you need to show respect. But she she was trying to disrespect him. And me and the dude is a little young dude. He's behind me. He's in my earth saying cracking jokes and stuff. And, you know, he's over talking about the man saying so, you know. But anyway, the man is just standing there. And then another sister standing there. But her, she is going on and off about, I need to see this and... Uh, how much is that? And I need to know the prices of everything before I buy it. You know, and in the meantime, the line's building up. You try to argue with this man about his product. You know, and you try to get him frustrated. But what I love about him, he's black. The manager of the post office is black. The assistant's black. I'm black. What was funny about it, I'm thinking like, you know, in my man, I'm like, he getting ready to cuss her ass. <laughs> like, he getting ready to go off on her. Man, he politely said to her, I understand. Yeah. And the manager even jumped in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those right there and whatever and whatever and whatever. They all just was, they just, she was humiliated because they treated her, she came to them with evil and they treated her with so much God. I, mean, I ain't going to say God. They treated her kind. They just, because they ain't even put God in. They just treated her kind. God don't have to be in being kind because you can be of any faith and be kind. You could not even believe in God. That's real talk. I'm talking real to you. Now that I ain't gonna come with you. I hope y'all ain't heard that little cuss word. I'm not gonna come to you fake. Let's talk real. It ain't about being Christian and not being Christian. I'm gonna tell you my take on that one too. But anyway, you can be of any faith and nationality can be kind to a person. You don't have to be Christ like to be kind. That's getting twisted and that's manifesting in ugly ways, thinking that you gotta be a Christian and be kind. That's bull crap. You could be human. Just be human. Be kind to somebody. Be nice to somebody. Retroactivity. Be kind to somebody so kindness will come back to you. Give so it will be given to you. Give good so good will be given back to you. Because if you give evil, evil can come back to you. Real time. Let's just keep it simple, simple, simple like that. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? They, they humiliated her. She don't even realize it. She didn't realize it until she got to the door. How, how stupid she was. And, and I'm going to tell you when she realized that they smoothed everything over, they gave her what she wanted, handled the way she wanted to. So then when she got to the door, she knew she was humiliated. She knew we was laughing at her and had, had you know, pick your face up off the floor. She got to the door and she turned back and tried to say, yeah, because, you know, I wasn't trying to be a problem. I, yeah, get your tail on up out of there. That's what I'm talking about. Real talk. Been in the community. People that have been in the community a long time. Like I said, we need to start giving awards. Uh, the mayor, somebody got, they got some type of program and Wave 3 have a program where they give people a neighborhood. Like I said, I didn't get around to it because a lot of times you got to come out of your pocket. And right now I don't have the extra funds. But while I'm on this subject, like I said, I was hoping when I had the job, especially when I was working out there, I was hoping that, uh, 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 you know, I was hoping when I was working at Amazon. When I was hoping making the money, the little 14, 
1450. Man, I was having plans. I usually don't have plans, but it was like everything was going okay. You know what I'm saying? I was beating the struggle, catching the bus. Everything. I wasn't letting nothing distract me. I was over there. I was going to have a barbecue. I wanted to have a barbecue even at my house or at the park. I mainly at the park. I was going to have a barbecue and I was going to invite everybody. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have to stay so it wouldn't be no violence and all that. Leave the guns at home. But we could come and get a plate and leave. You know what I'm saying? Have a pork chop dinner. I have, because I don't, ribs is too expensive. <laughs> I have some hot dogs. You know, I'm going to have maybe hot dogs. Grab your hot dog or pop and some chips. You know, mainly the kids and the duck. Just to show some, some black unity. To show that we could come together in a peaceful manner. We could come together and love one another. Even if it's for a split second. That's what I wanted to do. Because anybody know me, when I have money, I've been doing this for a long time. I've put my money out there. I've lost money, but I put it out there to go toward my dream. I didn't always succeed. I've been failing a long time. This is not the first time. I fell back in what? Maybe 2005. I had thought about it. When Vigilantes, when I was first getting sold, 2007, I had a little TV giveaway. A dude named Fred, he ended up winning the TV. You know what I'm saying? I had a little raffle. So I've always been trying to dream. My dreams haven't succeeded. But you know what I'm saying? You knock a man down seven times, but it's not how many times he fall down, it's how many times he get up. So I've been knocked down more than seven times, and I've been getting up more than seven, you know. And like I said, I was drinking when I first started Vigilantes for Jesus, boo-boo. So it's not about what mindset you got to be in. If you got to be drunk or sober, so don't, don't ever get that twisted. I'm not going to come to you. If, if you notice anything about me, I, I'm, I'm coming to you. I'm not coming to you preacher-like and all that because I'm not a preacher. So I'm coming to you in a different way, and I'm just coming to you being being me, you know, and what God put on my heart, you know. So I'm not one of them people that sit back and tell you, don't drink, you know, don't drug, you know. That's, that's you, you know. I'm saying that when any t time something takes over you and controls you to the capacity that you no longer have custody of your children because of what you're doing, you're holding on to that cobra snake. And you'd rather hold on to that cobra that's biting the hell out of you than to take and take care of your own children. Then, okay, <laughs> I think you might want to stop. But one thing I tell you, like I tell my friends, they go back in the streets and they relapse. And they start holding their head down. And they like, ah, oh, man, you know, don't look at me. Don't talk to me. Nah, boo-boo. I'm not that person. No. I loved you when you was trying to get sober. And I love you now that you're getting high. My love don't change like that now. Uh-uh, because I had a change. Now, nah, boo-boo. I loved you then. I'm not what? I, who am I? I ain't nothing but a dirty, rotten, filthy man, a hoe, a wannabe. What? I ain't piece of sh You could take it. Duty is better than me. I'm talking about cow duty. I'm talking about dog duty. I'm talking about pigeon duty. A pigeon duty on me, I ain't got nothing to say because I'm nothing. I'm not even... I. I shouldn't even be here. That's how filthy I am. I done did all kind of dirt and harm people. I shouldn't even be here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, please. And who am I to look at you because you relapsed, because you getting high again? Who am I to judge you? Who am I? I better remember where I came from. I better remember where I'm at right now. You think I'm perfect? I'm not perfect because I'm talking about God out of my mouth and talking about trying to be like Christ. Who am I? I'm nobody. I'm not. I'm what? Man, do call me doo doo. Call me doo doo. Call me man, y'all gonna make me cuss. Call me that. Which I can't cuss, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, some of the words flow out so fast I can't even get them back. But yeah, I'm not gonna judge. No bad. I just embrace like I was telling you, I just embrace my friend. He's gonna look at me, talk about tell the truth, how do I look? I say you look beautiful. You look handsome. Cause I'm looking at him, yeah, right there. I'm looking at him with God ass. I'm looking at him the way I want him to look at me. Because I'm feeling, you talking about you relapse, I'm looking at me. I'm suffering. I'm struggling. I'm looking like, woe is me, dude. Not woe is you, woe is me. So basically, you got a woe, I got a woe. Both of us are woe one. So we in the same boat. How dare I try to figure out that I'm better than you. I'm not better than nobody. But at the same time, I'm not less than a whole lot of people too. And I don't have to take no whole lot off of nobody. I don't have to be fair. I don't have to feel like I'm less than. And I don't, I don't allow anybody to make me feel less than. So that's where I treat people. I love you when you're trying to get sober, which don't make you better because you're sober. Because a person sober, who are you? You're not God. All of a sudden, because you get sober, you God. 
No, you're not. You're just a human being that found a, a, a reason to change. You found out that cobra kept biting you and it bit you so much that God said change. God said change. I what? Some people have different beliefs. So some said change, change and they change you. And then you got into some books and you start seeing yourself. You know, that big other, a big, big book, you didn't see yourself in the way you needed to. So you got in that little book. I'm going to talk it. You got in that little book and that little book start telling you, hey, yeah. And you say, oh, yeah, I used to do that. <laughs> All right, I did that. Yeah, I you oh yeah, I did that. And you got around people that that when you open your mouth and you start talking, they knew what you were saying, and therefore you were speaking another language, cause there's a whole lot of languages, and that's a language. And you open your mouth and you talk, and they don't like what, <laughs> huh? What? Yeah, they was like yeah, yeah. I'm talking about white and black sitting in a room talking about yeah, I did that, I did that. Yeah. No, I'm not going to judge you. That's the real ones. They don't judge nobody. They don't judge you. Oh, you fell down? Are oh, you relapsed? Whatever. You got a new day. Not only a new day, you got a new minute. You fell down? Get back up. Start over. If that's your choice. If it's not your choice, I'm still going to love you. I'm not going to look down on you. Real talk. The real people. That's what I'm talking about. My real friends. My real friends I was around, they taught me that. You know, yeah, you, they need some money, they in the streets, whatever. I give them money. I don't care what you did. I don't care what you did, what you been through. I'm here to love you. I care about you. My caring and my love for you don't change. Man, it was a time I didn't love. I didn't know what that was. Hey, let's be real. Love? What's that? I know responsibility, now I know caring, but that's too deep. I ain't going to go there right there because that's about me, and it's not about me. It's about God and me. It's about me trying to help people. But uh, like I said, though, yeah, I don't look down on nobody. And like I said, I'm not prejudiced against no white people. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about that. Because like I said, there's people that I love uh, over, over uh, that my pickle man and the video man over there. They know me. You know what I'm saying? I used to freak with them. And back in the day, like I said, I'd get high going there and get every uh, Halloween over, the, over in Portland. I used to go over and get movies for my kids. You know, I get paid. I used to make seven, eight hundred dollars a week, straight up a week, and uh, I get paid and stuff like that. It was buying a house, you know, and uh, that's bragging, boast, whatever. And uh, I got a uh, uh, anyway. I would get movies, and we sat and eat candy. We called the candy day, uh, pig out. We called the pig out day. And me and my three kids, we all sat there and we watched scary horror movies and stuff, and just pig out all kind of candy we used to get from a Twenty Eighth Street, the gas station there. You know, so, yeah, I've always contributed all, all my life. I've always contributed to where I live. In the area I live in, I've always, well, except here. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've always contributed to the neighborhood because that's where I live. I've always did. Anybody that tell you that, any neighborhood I've lived in, is it, oh, yeah, I know her. I, uh, I'm familiar with her. You know what I'm saying? But, uh. Yeah, I always believe in giving back and giving to where I live because where I live, I want to better my house and where I stay at my apartment. Therefore, I want to better your area. I want to frequent you so you'll stay in the neighborhood. A lot of people don't take it that serious, and that's what it's about. If you don't contribute to a store, they can't exist. If you don't spend your money there, they can't exist. They've got to go out of business because everybody got to pay somebody. And... <laughs> Nobody's going to step back and say, well, I said you live in the community and you have a store in the community. You don't have to pay rent. You don't have to pay LG&E and water since you live in the community. We're glad that you're here, so we're not going to charge you. At, you better stop. No, they're not. You got to pay. And another thing with that situation right there, while I'm talking about businesses, like I said, I see a lot of things. Because I, I try to stay in the know. I don't, I'm not one of them people to sit back and, and run my day map. I'm telling you what I see. If I don't see it and I haven't seen it and I don't know about it, nine out of ten times I won't talk. And if I'm incorrect about something, I'm quite sure somebody will get down here and tell me about myself. You know, they did it on Facebook. Like I said, when dude did all that, I don't know what deal. I don't know. Maybe his translation uh, is different. I don't know what all he was talking about. But from now on, when I uh, post something on Facebook or whatever, and you tra and, and it's not translated, I'm going to start posting it up. I'm going to start printing it out. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm going to post and let everybody see the little negative. I don't, look, I don't do the positive. But some negative, a little threat somebody want to make, I'm going to start posting that and let it be seen. You know, so uh, showing how what I said affected somebody and they took it however, <laughs> which I really don't care how you take it. But uh, like I said, uh, uh, this is something that I've seen. Uh, I've seen it all. Uh, I've seen it and I, it was an article written about it. A while ago, if y'all think about it, I'm making up my bed while I'm talking to y'all because I'm, I'm talking and it's getting long. And y'all know I like to move around. I can't turn the light on uh, in Jamas. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, a while back, <clears throat> if I'm incorrect, y'all correct me as, as you will. You can correct me. I don't mind. I'm just talking about a dude trying to make a little threat. Sound like a threat to me. It wasn't in our language and I, and I pushed the translation thing. It sounded like a threat. That's all I'm talking about. But you got something negative to say, I left everything open. I leave everything open. Because I'm not, I don't want to run my mouth and not uh, 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 say something and not get a uh, response back. So if there's something negative or whatever, please respond. But uh, anyway, if y'all recall, back in the day, a couple of years back, they was talking about how the Chinese was all over 4th Street, how they owned all the businesses. Y'all remember? 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 A long time ago, let's go back a little further. Remember when Grants was down there? Like I tell people, my people will tell you about me. I might have drank, and I did a lot of drinking, but God always blessed me with a heck of a member. I thank God for that. I've always had a heck of a member. And uh, Grants used to be downtown. Uh, you had Roses downtown. You had a whole lot of businesses that, that was flourishing downtown. A lot of business. And then the Chinese came, Chinese, Japanese, I don't know what they are, different, they came, ethnic group, came in, and they start buying a lot of businesses down there. So, they had a write-up in the paper a couple of years ago, not that far back, they had a write-up, had the, uh, certain ethnic groups, well, I think it might have been in Leo, I think it was in the Leo paper, because they was blunt about it. I'm not sure, though, I'm not going to say it was Leo, I'm not sure, but it was, a, I like Leo paper, you know, it's a nice paper. But uh, I haven't seen it lately. But uh, yeah, uh, they, anyway, they was blunt. They was talking about how they was down there, and uh, uh, people couldn't uh, people couldn't purchase the property. People wanted the property. Hello, I heard. I can. I thank you, Jesus. I can feel somebody's spirit connecting with man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And they talked about them being down there, and they wanted the property, but they all kept moved in. Uh oh, signal. They all had the uh. They all had the businesses, so uh, I got to plug up real quick. They had the businesses, so people wanted that property because they wanted to do some things with it, but they owned all of the, uh, they, they, they didn't own it. At the time when I was young, I used to think they owned stores until I found out about business. But anyway, they was renting all of the property, and so people couldn't get it. So they, they had a little talk, you know, they was talking about it, whatever. So if you notice, Somebody got to talk louder than somebody. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm saying this, not to damn them because I'm proud of them because they take a look after each other. When one open a business, they all stay in there together. Then they take and go open another one and they rent, they rent, they rented all the businesses up and down. That's how they bully that area. I, I don't have no hate for that because you do what you got to do. They got to feed their families too. And you know, if you, if you allow it, so it will be. Come on with it. So anyway, you remember? They, they was down there. Let's back up. You had Fast Assist, which is still sitting there. Then you came up to the corner. You had the pocketbook store. Then you got the one across the street, which now is getting ready to leave. They're going out of business. Last I looked, they was going out of business. But they was all up and down there on the left and right side, selling purses and dresses and stuff. So now I think it's only one down there. Most of them merged into uh, Fast Assist. And I'm just talking real talk. They all family. But when you first was going down there, you didn't know they was family, did you? They, caught, they, didn't, they didn't talk to each other. You didn't see them all the time unless you constantly frequent there. I constantly frequent there because I constantly had money then. So I used to go all the time. And that's another thing when I'm talking to you about languages. Who can speak English and who can't speak English? Because I lived it. I lived it. I'm not just talking to talk to you. I'm telling you what I, I experienced. So I used to go out of town shopping. So they never did. They would act like they didn't know each other because they would. They you didn't hear them speak. 
So, you know, what they spoke in their language, Japanese, Chinese, whatever it is they speak. So, you didn't think they was kin. Because a lot of times you go in one and you be like, well, I want to take it back. And you didn't see them. But a lot of people didn't. I did. I would see them taking and ease over to the other store real quick when ain't nobody look. Especially lunchtime. They would merge with each other. Anyway, like I said, I just watch stuff. I'm one of them people. I watch stuff. I, I watch. I watch where I spend my money. I watch stuff. Because I'm one of them people. If something's not right, I take stuff back. Y'all, don't get it twisted. It's not the first time I've been arguing. I've been arguing all my life. I didn't even realize that. I've always been arguing. I should have been a lawyer. But I missed that shit right there. So anyway. So yeah. So the point I'm making is they moving all of them out for there. And as you look out the corner now, they made that a, 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 I think it's a salvation. I forget what it is. It's a place that helps people. That's out in the corner now where the chain, where the store used to be that was selling the purses. They're gone. And now it's a, it's a different business. And also, I, as soon as they move out, you notice people move in. My point is, why did they leave? I'll wait. Why did those businesses go out of business? Huh? They knew they didn't, didn't nobody want them. They knew that certain people didn't want them down there. And they didn't fold. So now why is it they're folding now? Folding now and have, have folded. Yeah. Because either the rent was increased or they didn't get any business. Think about it. And that's what I'm saying to you. Patronize the stores in your neighborhood, but especially black people. Why can't we have? Why can't you treat a black business like you do with all these other ethnic groups? Like I said, I've been downtown. Wasn't no black uh, businesses down there. But let me take it back. I think, uh, well, it's a men's store. Uh, a couple of stores down there at the men's store. And Mr. Witchcock, he's cool. Now, don't, don't bad say nothing bad about J.J. Wiggs. <laughs> Because I remember J.J. Wiggs when he started, anybody know about Wiggs and Weave and her, J.J. Wiggs started right over here off of uh, Gosling. Across from Big A Chapel, he was over in that shop as far as I can remember. I know he was there. And then he, I guess he jumped down on 4th Street. I know the next thing he ended up jumping down there. That's how I, the only way I remember it. But uh, yeah, he used to be around the corner because I used to see him in there. Used to go in there. My mother went in there. So he was right there. I'm right. He was right there on the corner. Right there in the pen way. So anyway, yeah, you know, yeah, we don't touch him. We don't touch the wig, man. It's real, real, real wig, man. Right there, JJ. That's why I purchased my mama's wig. My mother was in a nursing home. All the years mama was in a nursing home until mama just died August the 16th. Mama's wig was still there. It had the little micros on. I'm talking about that was a bad wig. It, he wanted like 60 something dollars for it. And uh, he sold it to me. That's, this is what I'm talking about. I told him my situation. He said, is it for you? I said, no, it's for my mother in a nursing home. He said, my mother's in a nursing home. When she was in a nursing home, I had her wig a certain one. He said, but if you get this one, this one right here, this will, this will last. He said, I tell you what, he sold it to me for like 35 or $40. That's what I'm talking about, helping people. Not just, just hearing the story, but helping people. Seeing a person don't have enough, but no one, yeah, yeah, hear the story. But helping a person, because some people give you, you know, some of us will give us some of you know, do your mom and dad fast tag, come on now. But, uh, yeah, helping people in the community, feeding, and I'm not even in that community, for sure, but I'm talking about being a, being a good, oh, uh, what is it, what is the word I'm looking for? Being a good representative of your store. Being a good store, being wanting to uplift where you live, wanting to uplift people, caring about people, not just about your business, not being about just your business, not being just about your money, but being about a concern for another individual, for another human being. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm like, we'll give love to a lot of other people. I was watching a, a, a little movie, and uh, it was getting on my nerves, but... But I looked at the I looked at the uh, ratings. I was looking at the reviews of what they were saying about because I do a lot of that now because I don't have time to waste. I'm too old now. I ain't got time to try to watch no movies for no. I don't watch movies for two or three hours. I, I can't sit still that long. I don't like doing that. So anyway, in the movie it was a uh, uh, Carrie's War or something. So about a little girl and uh, her little brother or whatever. And back in the war days. They had taken in, uh, when the mother and daddy was in the war, they was, it was over like in England or Britain or something. 
So when the mom and daddy, yeah, or London. So when the uh, mom and daddy went to war, the kids would be left. So they would take the kids and send them off on a train to go to different homes where people would take care of them until the war was over. It blew my mind, and I had forgot about that. I remember, remember child slavery in some country? Y'all remember that? Yeah, brought back those memories. When we talking about black people being slaves, think about when children were made slaves. A lot of places, and a lot of people are still slaves now, making a lot of clothes and stuff they talk about. So anyway, hello, a lot of people know about slavery. So uh, anyway, in the picture, they made a statement. The brother uh, had a business. Like I said, I ran through it. But basically, he had a business, and he wanted the sister's house when she died. But the sister had some people that were her friends. One man was handicapped, and the other lady was a lady that helped her out because she had been ill a long period of time, so they helped her out. So her and her brother had differences because of that. They hadn't really been speaking, but, you know, they would uh, interact as far as, like, food. The people in the, the sister's people would prepare, like, ducks and stuff for them and send it to them. You know, but he was supposed to be a preacher. He was standing up preaching up in the church, but, yeah, he didn't have no love for for. He wanted to dictate his sister's wealth. Let's put it that way. So they made a statement in there, and she said, oh, when I die, she said, tell, she told the little girl, she said, when I die, tell my brother, because the little girl lived with the brother, that she was one of the children that was sent off, you know, during the war. And uh, the sister that was sickly, she said, tell my brother when I die, tell him that I care about him. But sometimes love for a stranger is more powerful. And, you know, at the end, the little girl got it. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Thank God I didn't sit through this hour and a half movie, but I got that. And that's powerful. Family is like Jesus said. My family is family that believe as I believe. All they did, they did a whole lot of twists and turns, but basically they got back right to the Bible. My family is people that believe as I believe. Everybody blood kin to you is not just your family. And I'm saying that to say, too, Having concern and love for one another. Every neighborhood not, is not my neighborhood. That same token with that too. Every neighborhood. But wherever I go and I do business, I'm helping that area. I'm feeding that. But is that the business I want to go to? When I'm feeding you, are you feeding me back? Are you feeding somebody else? And like I said, with that man down there, J.J. Wiggs, and, and, and with the uh, pickle man in the, that's in the community, that's helping the community because he's a star. Like, certain time of day, you want to pop or whatever, you can go get it. You want some chips, you can go get it. He has an ice machine in there now, so you get your ice. I got to have my popcorn. He has that. He's contributing to the neighborhood. Okay, as long as we contribute to the people that we do business with, we benefit them. They don't have to benefit us, even if they got goods in there, you feel me? But it's nice when you do have kindness. I hope I'm expressing this because I feel like I got a little bit off the point. Giving it should be given. Knocking the door should be open. You know what I'm saying? Treat me with kindness. I treat you with kindness. People in the neighborhood that come in neighborhoods that, that people don't want to go in. When people are in the neighborhood, the businesses are there, the family dollars, the dollar generals, the dollar trees, all these places in there. I was in the store today. The store is getting ready closed. Some people came in and she told them they got to leave their backpack at the door. The man going to argue, and he didn't argue, but he was like, you know, I got a jacket on. Do I need to take that off, too? So the, the lady, you know she was a sister, she replied real quick. She said, if it got a whole lot of pockets on it, you do. Man, you're going in the dollar store, and I know who's doing a lot of the stealing. I'm not talking just to everybody. I know it's a lot of people that got a dope habit, a crack habit. They running in the stores, and they stealing. You know what I'm saying? But even then, you still can have a little bit of sense. Stop hurting where you live. Stop tearing up. You know what I'm saying? Mama used to say it like this. Don't do this where you eat. Why, 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 why you turn up? Man, perfect example. I, I'm going to go and reinuate this, and then I'm getting out here. Reinuate. I'm going to say this one more time. Go out to the malls. Go out past St. Matthews. Go on out to E-Town. Go on out to those places. How many of those places do you have to leave your backpack? I'm not saying that they shouldn't do it because I understand what they're doing. I, I'm fine with that. Just like when you go to the dollar store on 4th Street, they got one of the people of the store, one of the employees sitting by the door to keep prevent people from stealing. I like that theory. I like that. That's cool. That's cool. 
You know what I'm saying? Rather than trying to have security guards and all this stuff that can rough somebody up. Yeah, have somebody there. You know, hey, we watching you. But also with that, what's beautiful about that, know your neighborhood. You know who's coming in. Put people in there. People, I love it. And the people I'm talking about is going the door and the people lady that check the back, which is white, black, and work in there in the store. But you know who's coming, man. You know you don't got caught stealing. I had a friend. <laughs> oh, my God. I've been looking for him. I seen Last time I seen him, he had a bandage on his arm. But uh, he's a nut, man. He was stealing so much out of the dollar store. Man, he was stealing so much out of the dollar store. He stole something and left his wallet. I said, oh, my God. They had nerve to go back in the store to steal again. Um, they like, dude, ain't this you? <laughs> dude, don't come back in here. So, please, believe me, you know, Lord Jesus, help him. But, uh, yeah, you know, and that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're going to have thieves. But, and, but what I'm making a point of, you don't have that. Nobody's sitting in the door. Nobody's searching, making you leave your backpacks when you go fire out. For example, they're not having that. They look at you and you look real suspicious. The police is already sitting in a lot and had that 10 time waiting for you to do something real stupid. So, why are you down here? Why are you down here turning up where you live, man? Why are you doing that? Because it's easy? Yeah, okay, it's easy. But let me play it all out to you. Let's play the whole story out. Let's, let's tell a little story real quick. When you're going in these stores, which are not, you know what I'm saying, you're going in the stores that are uh, corporate stores. Corporate stores mean that they're owned by a, a, a lot of people. I, I want to address, I got some plans about that right there, but like I said, I can't, my hands are tied right now, but I have a whole lot of things God been putting on my mind. Ah, oh, man, I got some stuff written down, but like I said, mm, and then you know about the writing. I can't leave things written down long because somebody has stole my ideas one time. So anyway, uh, I have some plans about that, but anyway, corporate means that they're owned by a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Not one individual owns a store, so it's a lot of people that invested in the store to make money off the store, you know. So they have plans when they come into the area, you know what I'm saying? So they're about money, so they're not about trying to keep hiring security guards because it takes out of their pocket. Here's the hit. When you go down there and you're stealing out of Family Dollar, Dollar General, I'm talking about Family Dollar, Dollar General, you know, all the little stores, stores like that, Kroger's and all them, Kroger's a Kroger's a standard. They probably got insurance out of the wazoo. But when you hit all of them little stores, continue like that, back up and knock windows out and take all the stuff out of there and do things like that, all they end up doing is saying, forget you. They talking about you. Don't put nothing down in the West End. Go on. Don't put nothing down there. Go on and take it. Take the store, just like they do that family dial. Then you have an eyesore. An eyesore is a place that's ugly. That sat in there, you could tell it used to be a business that's no longer. So then people pass out, woo, wonder what happened. Anytime when you get a you get a family dollar, a dollar store, a place that's a dollar, and they leave you, you sad. You sad, we sad. We sad when we run people out that's coming into the community to benefit. I know a dollar will go a long way with me. I just got me some contact paper. If I go to another store, it's two dollars and three dollars. If I go to Lowe's or something like it might be five dollars for the roll. I got a roll for a dollar from the Dollar Tree. I'm glad. I thank God for the dollar store. So why are you hurting somebody that's trying to help us? Man, like I said, you just bring tears to my ass. Because I see it all the time. I see somebody helping. You go to the store, you're getting some dollar candy. Dollar candy. You go to clothing stores, you're getting cheap clothes. The clothes that we purchase, you go somewhere else from City Trees, you go somewhere else, they $50, 60 $500 for some of the jeans. We're getting them cut price. Why are you stealing from somebody that's trying to help? Why are you making yourself look criminalish? People got to have you leave your bag. Believe me, that's not just you. I got to leave my bag because it's stealing, because you're stealing from the store. I got to be humiliated. It's humiliating. To have to leave your bag at the door and not know I just made a purchase of maybe a hundred dollars. I got to leave my bag at the door to go inside the store to look. And then I don't know if my bag's going to come up missing. And if it does, who's going to pay for it? A lot of times they're not even going to say that they, that, it, that they took it. They're not even going to say that they're responsible for it. So in order for me to go to the store 
and to any of those stores in the West End, I got to take and leave my bag nine out of ten times. 